You can retire on Social Security. Chapter 12 has everything we've been told about retirement planning wrong. Upon seeing all the data, I began to ask, what if everything we've been told about retirement planning is wrong? What does retirement plan look like then? Thankfully, the good folks at firecalc.com have designed let me, okay, yeah, have designed a calculator we can use to compare two retirement plans. The traditional model and one based on Bernicke's model with spending decreases. They call this the reality retirement plan. Let's take someone with $250,000 uh, with a $250,000 portfolio who expects to live for 30 years in retirement. He invests in a typical 60% stock, 40% bond portfolio. He has done his research and is convinced of the traditional 4% rule for withdrawal rate throughout retirement. What this means is he'll take 4% out of the portfolio the initial year and increase that amount with inflation every year thereafter. So his withdrawals will be $10,000 in the first year, $10,400 in the second, $10,816 the next, and so on. The 4% rule. The 4% rule was developed by a financial planner named Bill Bangin in 1994. He was trying to determine the safe withdrawal rate, i.e. the maximum amount one could take from his portfolio without running out of money. If you are interested in his initial research, you can read this article from 1994. Just click the link. Again, you can't click the link if it's on the, hard, on the paperback, but I do put all the, the uh, website addresses in the footnotes at the back. If it's in the Kindle, you can't. The 4% rule slowly but surely gathered steam and it ultimately has become the de facto suggestion for withdrawal rates from financial planners everywhere. The problem with the 4% rule is the assumption that retirees continue to spend an increasing amount adjusted for inflation each and every year. Again, what if this is an inc incorrect assumption? If it is, a whole generation of retirees are spending well less than they actually could be. They are under-consuming the first years of retirement, the years when they are more inclined to do things, and thus will have more income available in the later years when they aren't as keen on doing much. I call this a flying coach so your kids can fly a first-class retirement plan. I've got no problem with your kid, but come on, no reason for you to be a pauper so your kids can live like kings. In fact, Mir Statman, PhD, wrote, this about, wrote about this very thing in a Journal for Financial Planning article when he quoted a widow who said, My husband never reaped any benefits from his saving habits and only received three months of Social Security before dying. May others escape his fate. In Table 25, we use a FireCalc website to run four different retirement scenarios. Under each scenario, the retiree started with $250,000 and was invested in the traditional 60-40 stock to bond mix. So you got to get, hold on, see a type, well not a typo, uh, omission, got to get that guy right there, good. In scenario one, the traditional 4% rule, a retiree safely spent 10000 the first year and increased it each year with inflation. FireCalc uses historical real returns dating back to 1871 and runs 119 30-year scenarios. How would this retiree have fared? He would have run out of money only five times, a probability of success 95.8% of the time. His average balance after 30 years was $354,246. Just out of curiosity, let's take the same retiree as above, but have him hire a money manager for a 1% fee. What are the results then? Oh, shocking, sarcastic. He would have run out of money 22 times, a success rate of 81.5%, and would have left an average balance to his heirs of $200,488. Just a side note, if a financial planner or any professional advisor is running numbers for you using the 4% rule and not including the fees you pay, run, do not walk away. Under the reality scenarios, the retiree could spend 15,000 the first year, a 50% increase over the 4% rule. This allows him to spend much more at the beginning of his retirement, the time when he's more likely to want to spend the money. Even better, not only does he not run out of money, he even leaves 70,000 more to his heirs than if he followed the pauper approach advocated by the 4% rule adherents. Obviously, we have no clue what will happen to you specifically. No one does. But the evidence points overwhelmingly in one direction, that you'll spend less as you age. Thus, enjoy some of your savings now and stop worrying about, and stop worrying about running out of money. Here's table 25. I show you the four different scenarios. 
250,000 portfolio, 60, 40 stock to bond, 119, 30 year cycle since 1871. The 4% rule had a 95.8 success with only five years of failure. The, of those five years, the worst case scenario would have had a negative 68,000. The best was 1.14 million with an average of 354,000. Already talked about the 4% with 1% fee. The reality retirement, which is uh, Bernicke, is just going back to, and I gotta fix that right there. Hold on just a second. Some ugly stuff in that chart. Bear with me just a second. I gotta make these all dollar signs as well. All right. All righty. All righty. Good. All right. So you can see the reality he had a 100% success, no running out of money. 250,000 was the least, uh, the la that, that's the worst he did. So he started with what he, he ended with what he started. He averaged 634,000 and his most was 1.486176 million dollars. Uh, start that's at four percent, so that's starting at the ten thousand dollars. But what if you start at fifteen thousand dollars, which is 50 50 percent more than the four percent rule allows? He still did not run out of money one time, 100 percent success. His least available was 36,000, that's the worst case scenario. His average is 413,000, and he is uh, his best was 1.184 million. So you can see that's that's a no brainer. I think that's it for this chapter. Let's see. Yeah, chapter 13, What Savings Crisis. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.